The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So, if the son frees you, you will then truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me, because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence, then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. And Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. As Jesus had this exchange with some of his early, earliest uh, Jewish believers, he means this clearly as a bit of a warning for them not to I suppose he wants to guard them against a sort of shallow or superficial faith um, early on. And so when he talks about those who commit sin are slaves of sin, he clearly means that as a, as a sharp uh, word of warning to them. And yet there is a paradoxical message of hope and consolation. Perhaps Jesus even meant this for them but that we can take from the next thing he says, a slave does not remain in a household forever. So whether or not Jesus meant it this way, what struck me in preparing for today's homily is that if he's just said to them, if you commit sin, you are a slave to sin, which presumably most of us here are struggling with our own... Um, temptations and habitual sins that we are trying to get over, we may feel discouraged in the sense that we are enslaved or entrapped in our sins. But then Jesus goes on to say, a slave does not remain in a household forever. So if we think of ourselves in a sense of being in the household of sin, as being slaves of sin, then... Jesus' message of hope or consolation could be that we're not stuck in the house of sin forever. And that, in fact, when he says those who the sun sets free are free indeed, one image we can take, particularly anyone who may be, say, a fan or addicted or a slave to uh, the TV show 24, or other kinds of shows that have lots of action and people are taken hostage and Jack Bauer comes to the rescue and gets deep inside the, the, the warehouse or the office or wherever they are and he manages to get them out. Um, then we can look at Jesus is doing this kind of rescue operation for us. We are the hostages. We are the slaves to sin and sin and the devil may have us really way deep 
in the cavernous uh, basement or labyrinth of this building, the house of sin. But Jesus has broken in, and he's using all the, the heat-seeking uh, devices to see how many people are where, and he's got Chloe with the satellite, all this other stuff. Sorry for the inside jokes for those of us who are 24 fans. But the, the, uh, the image is we have been set free. Jesus has already broken into the household of sin, and he's gathering us up, and he's drawing us along with him, and we're making our ways back out through all the hallways and the and the different rooms, and he's finding people who have been hostages for years and decades, perhaps. And so we are truly free in the sense that we are on the way with Jesus to get fully liberated and rescued from the household of sin and from our slavery. But we're still in the house, you might say. And so when we do find ourselves giving in to temptations, and we may get discouraged and disheartened by the thought of the same overall set of major temptations that each of us may deal with, and we find ourselves giving in, even with the best of intentions and the deepest resolution each time we go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Rather than letting it debilitate us and make us downcast to the point of hopelessness, let's adapt that image that, okay, I've given in again, but I'm on the way out of the building. I'm in the group of hostages that Jesus has rescued. He has truly freed us from our slavery to sin. Now we just got to find our way with him out of the building. As often is the case in our preaching messages here at St. Henry's, an uh, invitation that as we apply that image to ourselves so that we can not be disheartened or downcast about our own struggles with sin, let us also then grant one another the grace and mercy of applying that image to one another. And if we sometimes get annoyed or set uh, on edge by what we perceive to be the habitual sins of other people and those of us around us who we might say, there they go again, they're doing this or they're doing that or they've, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Let's give them the same grace and courtesy of saying, they're with me and we're all part of the hostages that Jesus has rescued and we're on our way out the building. And they may have fallen into this sin again, but maybe there's five or six times they would have and they resisted the temptation by Jesus' help. So the Lord is the one who, as he promises, has truly set us free. And even though we might not feel fully free from our deepest habitual sins and temptations, let's ask God to strengthen us that we don't get downcast and disheartened, but apply that image of we're part of the group of hostages that he has indeed truly set free, and we're on our way to get fully rescued from the household of sin and to be fully living as members of the household of faith.